Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we're going to be covering a newer technique of applying resin to smooth out your 3D prints and that is using an airbrush or aerosolizing it in some way. Now if you don't know I've been using SLA 3D printer resin to smooth out my 3D prints for a long time now. I've been using the method where you just brush it on with a paintbrush and then cure it with the UV light and it works great. About a month ago though I thought there's got to be an easier way to apply a nice even layers of this resin because if you use a paintbrush sometimes you get brush strokes or you get heavy and low spots and I tried to think of a way to get more even smaller layers and that's when I came to the idea to aerosolize this resin somehow and that's what we're going to be covering today. Like I said I was working on this video about a month ago but decided to scrap the video idea and I'll explain why later. But I recently saw a video by the creative collector where he does it with an airbrush on a smaller scale and so I thought I'd do my take on the video in the process as well. So let's get right into it. In short, I scrapped the original idea due to safety concerns. So if you are considering doing this method, you absolutely need to wear gloves, a respirator, and be in a well-ventilated area. You can see here I'm in my paint tent where I have the area totally enclosed. And I even have an air filter in here to clean the air while I'm in here. I'm going to be experimenting on this Boba Fett bust, and we're going to be working on the jetpack in particular. See, I've got some black Elegoo resin that I normally use on my Elegoo Saturn SLA resin printer. I've got my airbrush that's on its last legs of life, and then I've got my UV light to cure the resin once it's applied. Now, obviously, the first thing we need to do is load the resin into the airbrush. Now, I wouldn't recommend loading a lot at first because we're gonna be applying this stuff in really thin layers, so I only fill the chamber up about a third of the way. The problem with just attempting to airbrush raw resin though is that the viscosity of it makes it too thick to aerosolize very well, so we need to thin it out with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Now the ratio that I found works best was a one to four alcohol to resin ratio. We don't wanna thin out the resin too much to where it just becomes watery and runny, but we do need to thin it out if we want to get it through this airbrush. I'm using about 20 PSI on the airbrush. You don't want to go much higher than that. And again, I'll explain why in a minute. But here I just do a little few test sprays on the helmet and you can see what I'm trying to do. You can see the shine of the resin on the helmet. It is a very, very thin layer, but nonetheless, it is there. Then we're going to take the UV flashlight and cure that very thin layer of resin. And ideally, that will fill in a lot of the 3D print lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and get started on one half of the jetpack so we can compare the right to the left side. So now that we're spraying, I want to give a more in-depth kind of safety warning to this. That's why I scrapped the original video idea. Now this ultraviolet resin is very nasty stuff. If you guys get it on your skin in its raw form, you're going to have to wash your hands off with very thoroughly with water and soap and from the results that I had with my HPLV gun when I tried this a month ago I couldn't in good conscience recommend it to you guys and here's why when you are aerosolizing this resin it gets just about everywhere you obviously do your best to get all the resin on the figure that you're trying to smooth but you are no doubt going to have some overspray of this resin it's been aerosolized so it's going to get all over in the air and it's going to settle on all your benches, all your tools, everything in the room is going to get some small amount of this raw resin on it. And when I used it in the HPLV gun or a high pressure low volume gun, the amount of raw resin that got everywhere was way too much for me to in good consciousness recommend this method. Because if you're getting this raw resin all over your workspace, there are some serious health concerns that go with it. I'm trying to be as sincere as I can here, guys. Saving some time on sanding and smoothing is great and all, but please do not sacrifice your overall health just to save 30 minutes of sanding. In this hobby, we can work with some dangerous, dangerous stuff, and safety needs to always be at the forefront of your mind. If you just think of like how dangerous this stuff is, how, how many warning labels are on the resin itself, and how careful you have to be when just applying the raw form of the resin with your hands. Just think how much worse it is when you aerosolize it into the air. Like a whole nother magnitude of risks that you're taking on. And if you are not properly equipped to handle those risks, please do not do this method. I am literally begging you. It's why I scrapped the original idea. I didn't feel comfortable putting the idea out there just because I know some people are going to ignore my safety warnings and do it anyway. But like I've said, I've been seeing some other creators use this technique, and in the video that I watched, the guy wasn't even wearing gloves. So now that the cat's kind of out of the bag, 
I wanted to put out my warning in my video on this topic so that you guys can be as informed as possible before you even think of doing this. Okay, thank you all for listening to my safety spiel. Just know that it comes from a place of love because I want you all to enjoy this hobby for as long as we can. So let's check back in on the results and see exactly how well this method works. So after about three light coats curing the resin between each coat, here's how the jetpack looks. It's kind of hard to see if it worked due to the resin being kind of translucent. So I'm gonna apply just one single coat of filler primer so we can compare the two sides a little better. First though, I wanna show you guys kind of what I'm talking about about the overspray. And it's why I use such a low PSI on the airbrush to try and minimize this as much as possible. If you can kind of see, the camera doesn't really focus on my finger that well, but my mostly clean finger dragging across the table. I promise I wiped this entire table down before the video started so I had a nice baseline. The table looks really dirty, and it is, but that's from paint and stains. But you can see as I drag my finger across, there is a nice little coating of some dusty looking material, and that is actually kind of raw resin mixed with alcohol. You can kind of see what I'm talking about, about it getting everywhere despite my best efforts to keep it on the print itself. It's still got on my work table and presumably a very thin layer just about everywhere in this room. So after this, I'm gonna go through and wipe down all my tools and everything you see off to the right. Okay, now it's filler primer time. This should show us exactly how much work the resin did, how well it filled in a lot of those lines on the jetpack. I'm gonna let it dry for around 10 minutes so we can clearly see the differences as well. Cleanup of the airbrush wasn't actually too bad. I had to dump out this excess resin alcohol mixture. Unfortunately, we won't be able to use it for 3D printing anymore, but cleanup was pretty simple. I just ran some airbrush cleaner through my airbrush, letting it flow outward and then plugging the hole so that it actually flowed backwards and cleaned out the feeding mechanism a little bit. But I should be able to still use this airbrush for normal painting like usual. I mean, I won't lie guys, the technique definitely works. You can see the difference between the two sides. On the left side was just the filler primer and on the right was our airbrushed resin. The right side, definitely smoother than the left. I can barely see any of the 3D printer lines and I didn't have to sacrifice any of the details to get it that smooth. You can see I left the bottom side where the support material touched the print. I didn't even bother trying to fill that in with resin because those lines are a lot more thicker than the ones that we covered up and trying to fill in those lines with very, very thin layers of airbrushed resin just wouldn't be worth it. But you can definitely tell a difference on the print and this is an FDM print. I didn't try with any resin prints, but for something like that, where all of the layers are very small, this technique would probably work very well. Now, when I tried this for a larger FDM print using the HPLV gun, it definitely had a lot more of overspray of resin compared to using an airbrush. So that is one positive thing that I learned about this experience is that using an airbrush greatly limits the amount of overspray and the amount of resin that gets everywhere. So overall, this method is really good at filling in some small 3D printer lines without even the need for sanding, but, and this is a hard but, you need to be able to properly protect yourself from this method. It's definitely one of the nastier methods out there. Even looking back, I probably should have been wearing, you know, a full cover-up suit so it didn't get on my clothes or even on my arms. So if you're going to attempt something like this, make sure you are properly prepared and you do as much in one sitting as you can. I definitely would not recommend doing this just for a single print, just because the amount of preparation and all the safety equipment that you probably should put on and all the cleaning that you're gonna have to do afterwards anyways, you wanna maximize that as best you can. So if you resin print like three or four figurines and wanna smooth them all at once, this technique could be worth it. Thank you all for watching and thank you all for properly taking care of yourselves. Making things like a Boba Fett bust is definitely cool, but I also want you guys to be around for as long as you can so we can enjoy Star Wars together. And that involves taking the proper precautions when using dangerous materials. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again in the next one.